thank you all for coming to my uh, presentation. Uh, I'll get started. I think I'm the only one here at Unite, well I'm not sure, but uh, the only one I see that has their entire presentation done in Unity itself. So. <laughs> Uh, artists uh, for doing that because they uh, spent uh, I think all night uh, trying to transform the slides to something that's a little bit different. Um, you probably all seen that I'm uh, going to talk about uh, forklifts, uh, which is not really that sexy, but <laughs> um, I think what we've done with it is quite inspiring, and it's 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 not only a software challenge but also a, a, te a technical challenge to get it all working and get all working right. So my company's name is called Grin, not to be confused with the former Swedish Grin. Um, we were found about the same time, so it's like, okay, we'll just live next to each other. Well, we're still living. Um, <laughs> uh, my name is Wim Wouters. I uh, founded Grin uh, more than 10 years ago. And the Twitter address is wrong, actually. I just changed it yesterday and forgot to put it in the slides. It's now just grin underscore be, if you're looking for me. You'll find me through my email address or website. So, um, the forklift simulator uh, with a subtitle from iCatcher to Lifesaver. And well, I'll tell you how that all went. Uh, it all started like this. Ah, I don't have any sound coming through. <laughs> ding, ding. Okay, can you do this? And it's like, okay, can I do what? Oh, that's back. Next. Like, uh, okay, we need this interactive forklift for an installation at a trade fair. It's actually quite a big fair in Germany. It's called CNET, and it's all with material handling stuff. Really boring for me. And I said, okay, but we want it to be like an airplane simulator where you can sit in and have like a totally immersive feeling and have all the controls working right. It's like, okay. So what's in it? We need a seven minute, minute obstacle course to teach the people, uh, uh, the, the visitors, the, uh, the driving basics. And that's quite a challenge because the people that are actually um, uh, visiting the fair are not the drivers themselves uh, of the forklifts, but actually the, the, the buyers, the people, uh, the directors of the companies or the, uh, the sales uh, people of the companies that are actually buying the things. And so they never actually drove a forklift. Um, so <laughs> they get a chance to do it with a, with a fake one. We had to use all the controls of the real forklift and we had four months development time. That was with one or two people to do this. Um, actually, Toyota, that's the client, was a, uh, uh, was the client, and then it was a co cooperation with Grim, that's us, and UCAN, that's a communication agency that does all the communication of uh, Toyota material handling in Europe. So, that actually, found us uh, to do some cool stuff, animations, <laughs> that was 3 o'clock in the morning. Uh, challenges. Um, first of all, we had to get the, the physics right. The most important thing when you're making a forklift simulator is to get the physics right. And actually, Unity provided a great uh, amount of tools that actually does that for us. So we have the wheel colliders and great physics linking. So we, we decided to use the native Unity physics to, to do all that. Um, which was interesting because we had some problems, of course, because we were trying to link uh, the forks to the to the uh, the main object and have the forks go up and down and the mass moving uh, in in forward and front. So that gave a few issues, but nothing that couldn't be resolved for this uh, installation. Then multi-screen setup, something that was another uh, problem because we had four screens connected to, or we wanted to have four screens connected to the uh, the simulator three in front, one in the rear, um, but we had some problems connect, uh, getting the full screen or the full HD on all the screens, so we decided to split the whole thing up in two computers and have a network connection, also standard Unity networking, to uh, connect the front PC that, uh, connect, uh, that drove the, four, the front uh, three screens and then have another PC. It had a little bit of lag, but you never noticed because you couldn't watch the front screens and the back screens at the same time. So, <laughs> Uh, that was a good, uh, a good setup. Um, of course, uh, the hardware connection, we actually did a very, very simple uh, 
uh, think for this. Years ago, I, I did some hardware connecting and actually I screwed apart a, a computer mouse and connected the, the click buttons to something else and it all worked perfectly. This time we need a lot more controls. We need uh, six analog controls, and, or no, eight analog, analog controls and about 13 digital uh, switches. So we were searching the internet and actually we found a joystick control with really easy uh, click things where you can just uh, put in the, 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 the wires. And, and it all worked. So it's like, okay, all the, all the, the, the resistance the, uh, things <laughs> were the same, and it, it was just like having a big joystick with a lot of buttons. So, surround so audio, audio, next thing. Really important when you're driving a forklift, you don't have uh, 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 the feeling of motion, uh, but you want the sound to come from the right place, you feel the end, or you hear the engine under you. And we connect the surround system. Unity again works fine. We have this, they have surround audio integrated into Unity standard. So it's, uh, or Unity Pro, whatever. Um, and it all worked fine. So if you hit something behind you, you hear the sound from front. So if the horse is scraping over the ground, you hear them scraping in front of you. Um, and then, of course, the exercise integration. Um, that was, that was uh, tough. We had a, a seven minute obstacle course to fill. and. Well, there's a lot of different things that have, that have to be going on there. So what I'm going to show you now is just actually, I'm not going to show you everything yet, but just the reactions of the people driving the forklift on the fair. So we want more, let's see what uh, we can do. So that's when Forklift Simulator 2.0 started. And in the first Forklift Simulator, which was just a proof prop, just like I said, four months development time, really easy, to, well, not really easy to do, but a lot of different uh, technical issues and some software uh, things to handle. And then the second one was much more important because it's uh, all about safety and safety and training tool. And the thing is how it works in, 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 in uh, forklift training is actually the trainers go to the specific uh, areas where there, where there are more drivers and they actually uh, teach the, or, or give the drivers tips how to drive in their own environment. So that was one of the things that we tried to integrate in the whole thing. I'll go over some features now. What's inside the truck? Um, so we have a whole, whole bunch of new hardware, new screen covers, new screens, uh, new steering wheel control that was, it was too loose and, uh, and too fragile. Uh, so we need more resistance on the steering wheel. We don't have force feedback yet. We 
we'll probably will get that in the near future or uh, that in the near future. Um, new physics program. We did, uh, had a total new way of linking the, the fork and the arm of the, um, the forklift to the, the, the forklift itself. We had more wheels. Well, there was actually a three-wheel setup because we had some problems with, uh, with the steering and, and I don't know if people have ever done a, a car driving and game with UNT physics, well, any with the real car as well. The wheels don't have the same degrees when turning and stuff like that. Anyway, fi we fixed all that, we had more time to do that. And we had some calibration optimization, so if they made more forklifts like that, they could easily calibrate all the, the different screens and the hardware setup. But then, the biggest part was uh, the environment editor and the lesson editor. We, want, we didn't want to make all the lessons beforehand. We want the instructors to actually create environment themselves in a really easy and intuitive way. And also add lessons themselves. So it could be a product that could go larger and larger and larger. And it could be used uh, more efficiently than... Uh, yeah, and it was kind of boring making the lessons. So that's why we said, okay, do it yourself. <laughs> so, okay, that was done. Then we had a destructible environment. That was something that was, uh, that's just fun to make. We, we, we made racks and we linked them all with link joints and it's totally physics based. So if you drive into a rack, it all breaks like it, almost like it would break if it was a real iron rack. Uh, and then also the, the cargo itself uh, was um, made to, to, to be able to break uh, in different parts. And we added a multi-user uh, system not only for the communication between the front and the back PC, but also so that the instructor could actually uh, interact with, uh, with uh, uh, the trainee. At a different uh, computer screen and a different view at a bird's eye view, which was, which was yeah, nice. Uh, and also uh, he could uh, drive a forklift just by using the arrow keys on a laptop or navigate as, a, as a, a pedestrian through the area and do things that are really hard to program if you're making lessons for, 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 for a safety environment. Some things you just can't um, see beforehand how, how things are gonna look. So there's a lot of uh, randomness in there. And if, if you can do things that are, that are not foreseen, uh, yeah, you just get better training. So that's what's in there. And I'll show you. Somebody has to be I'll do some comments over this video. This is what the new uh, simulator actually looks like. It's a really slick uh, design. Um,
quick view of the instructor. I don't know if you're going to recognize the guy driving now. <laughs> that was also after a dead deadline, you can see that. <laughs> so this shows a little bit more of the stuff in action. And it's also a part of uh, a little training thing uh, to show the instructors. <laughs> For, for, for me as a, a trainee. So you can switch between uh, the forklift and uh, any kind of pedestrian actually. Oh well. Um, historical environments. I don't have the latest thing here. This is from, from just a production uh, screen capture. Uh, and actually the, the, the cargo is not falling apart in this older version. But you can see that the, the racks are really um, behaving quite well. Um, still linking together where there wasn't enough force and, and breaking where it was, where they had a, uh, more force driving something else. Also, if you turn too fast with the forklift, it actually does fall on its side and stuff like that, so you might see something like that. Percentage, percentage on everyone that, that, that gets sold. So um, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, <laughs> we're, um, we, have, we have some, some things we're thinking about. You, you don't have 3D in the screen, so we, we, there's some solutions that you could think of to, to have that. Because when you're driving forklift, it's quite important to know exactly how deep you are or when you're picking up stuff. And, and, and um, two solutions. We, we, well, we thought of more solutions because the most obvious one is just having a 3D visor and just looking around like that. But then, of course, you don't see the control lights in the dashboard. You can't see your steering wheel, your boat, uh, your, your, your whatever gears and stuff. So, so that was that was a no-go. That was not uh, not interesting. Um, so we thought, okay, well then we've got we can uh, put 3D on the screens, but make a, give the people uh, some glasses. But then there were, yeah, if, especially if you use active shutter glasses, um, there were some problems linking all the screens together so that, they, uh, that the refresh rate was at the same uh, time. That was something uh, of a problem, or well, it wasn't, but the cost would go, it would cost just about the same amount as the whole forklift now. Um, and then, okay, passive 3D screens were also uh, uh, in, uh, an option, but they are quite expensive and. Um, well, they, most of them are back out of the market at this point. There's only for computer use uh, now. So, um, uh, head tracking, of course. That was a thing we've been testing with. I don't have a video of that with me. But that worked really well. We just um, we tested it with, uh, with a webcam and this uh, open uh, uh, CV uh, thing. Um, and we could actually you know, just move our head and, and, and the whole vision of all the cameras, because uh, there's like four cameras on. Yeah, of course, there's four speed, four cameras moving, and you can actually uh, uh, give a perception of depth, and that's something that's almost good enough, because when you're in a real forklift and you want to see how, how your fork is uh, behaving uh, above you, you actually put your head to the front and, and see how, how far you are from the object you're trying to take. So that's probably the most interesting uh, solution at the time being, so 3D screens. Yeah, maybe when the passive screens uh, get a little higher resolution and 
uh, back in the market because a lot of uh, Philips and stuff they took them all out of the market. Um, that was short. I think I rushed it a little bit. Um, so thank you. <laughs> something that I've been working with for, or thinking about and, and, and done different projects with for years. We made a, a museum builder and gallery builder and I'm totally into user generated content and procedural generated content so that was something that was really interesting for me uh, personally because I just, I just think that's the only way a small company can make a really big project if you can let, uh, let everybody contribute. Um, so that technically that was something we could uh, use again. Uh, the other things, the assets all had to be made. Uh, some stuff is, is, is bought. Um, the characters were, were just bought because the, it wasn't worth spending our time uh, making characters for this project. So we bought those characters and we some assets uh, I think are actually from the Unity Asset Store as well, I think the factory. Uh, you see in the background one of the movies is from the asset store. Um, so yeah, some of the knowledge, but, but most of it's, it's made uh, yeah, just for the project. I think we can use the, the editor again for other things uh, later because uh, that's quite a powerful and intuitive tool. Any other questions? Someone there? Yeah, you didn't see those in the video, right? No. No, yeah, well, they are there. Was it just things falling apart? No, actually, we have a lot of other stuff. We have uh, we use level of detail because we can have actually have uh, tons of, uh, of 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 stuff in the environment. Uh, so we have the the cargoes. They're all in three levels of detail. Uh, one is actually where the uh, the boxes are all separate boxes. So with physics collected to all of the boxes. So if you hit them or they get enough uh, force. They actually break apart and, and fall into different smaller boxes, and some of them are like dented and stuff like that. Um, Those are pre-made. Yeah, they're all pre-made, but but well, the physics make it look like real rubble, so it's it's really nice when you, when you actually hit a big wall of rubble. If there's too much boxes, then it does give some hiccups. Um, but yeah, it's uh, I got it. <laughs> What was the development time and uh, team size? Well, this was actually uh, the development time. Of the, the first, the first version was four months, but it's actually only two people working on it, and, and actually one almost full time, and one uh, even less than full time. One was mostly uh, doing the networking between the front and the back PC, and then later in the second version uh, between the instructor, the back and the front PC. We could actually, and we have another view. We have a. Uh, what's it called? Uh, the the um, yeah yeah the mirrors. No, they're they're all uh, in, in in screen, so you know, that's not a different view. But there's a consumer view, and if you if it would be used in a booth, you can have different uh, screens uh, where the with people that visitors could just uh, drag around with the mouse and look what what's happening in the in the area actually. So it's an, an extra view, but it's, it's like the instructor, but without interaction possibility. Uh, yeah, the second part was eight months, uh, also one one person and uh, and, uh, and one network programmer. So it's it's actually quite a cheap project to do. Um, probably if we had more people, it would be done a lot faster. Although we now we had time to to, to iterate and, and get things better and better and better. Uh, I think a shorter time wouldn't have fixed the problems that we uh, ran into during the project. Yeah. Any more questions? One more. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, I, I, I don't remember. That was version one. That was like in April uh, last year. So um, no, uh, uh, 
Second best, uh, there was one guy that was really freaky with that. <laughs> <laughs> but we tried this also in, 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 in Paris. There was this uh, French championship uh, forklift driving, and, and Toyota sponsored the event, and they took the simulator there, and I was there because someone needed to be standby if something went wrong. And it was like the second time it went out of the house, and they wanted a the programmer there or someone who knew how the system worked. And I was there, and it's like the forklift drives were really amazing. Like this is this is just like driving real forklift, the same the same feeling we get. Uh, only the steering wheel didn't have the, the, the force feedback that you would expect. And if you're driving longer than seven minutes, you get motion sickness. <laughs> which is to be expected. Uh, and which is why all the Airplane simulators have these cabins that move so that your brain gets full and not only your eyes, or well, it gets full both ways. So that's, that's one of the downsides that we can't really solve uh, without, without uh, a lot of extra uh, yeah, things. Okay, then I want to thank you for uh, your time.